Morales. Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello and welcome to a Birdcat Wonderland for the game of Manchester City nil, Arsenal nil. Deke has gone, he's gone on an international adventure up north, so it's uh, sad times for Deke. And to replace him, with, uh, I couldn't think of anyone better to do it. A man who is a deep thinker, a great lover, and a man who has many pairs of shoes. I'm, I'm guessing about the shoes, I don't know. <laughs> it's Femi, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, all good, all good. No, I don't have that many pairs of shoes. I have I've bought two pairs this week alone. Isn't that terrible? I'm now up to five. I don't even five. use them. Okay, yeah, five. I've, got, I've, got, I've got I've definitely got way more than five. Yeah, I bought some yellow ones. Never a good idea. Actually, to be fair, actually shoes shoe, actual real shoes. I only own one pair of real shoes. I'm on Everything about, else is trainers. Foot clothing isn't is the best foot way clothing. to put it. I have got about fifteen maybe. Oh dear oh dear. That's terrible. Um, right, I'm going to go and change that to that. Let's go and say hello to some of the people in the chat, if anyone's joining us at all. Tom Andrew is there. Uh, big love for Gabby. Paul Nell, not Neil, is there. Uh, big result, very big result. And lots of numbers. 115 charges, still cheating. Why Grealish and Halland have to keep throwing themselves on the ground? I don't know. Anthony Taylor is still a C-word. Couldn't wait to book Raya for time-wasting. Follows out with yet no yellow cards for City, despite innumerable fouls on Saka and Erdegaard. Uh, Tom says, welcome back, Femi. Yeah, it's been a little while, but we haven't been doing anything. Uh, Paul Nell says, uh, I thought AT was fine in the first half, but called the game in City's favour for the second half. That would be Anthony Taylor. Right, Fem, um, let's have a little look at the... The, where's the the lineup? Which is here. Any surprises in the lineup for you? Uh, absolutely not. I, I thought Jesus would play today on the left hand side, and my I mean, pretty much everything else is is standard, isn't it? My only concern before the game was Kivior at left back. Um, but yeah, I, I, there was no surprise at all, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, we can go into it as the game goes on. Yeah. how it panned out but in terms of our lineup no surprises for them i was a bit surprised that Kovacic played because he hasn't been playing much recently and obviously they did go four at the back four center backs at the back which from their point of view they did that to nullify our long ball basically <laughs> so we just couldn't they knew that we would want to launch it long at some points and they knew that if they had those four guys at the back that habits would find it really tough to beat them um, aerially, to be honest with you. I was a bit disappointed that, hey, who's Jesus? Jesus started. He, he's done absolutely nothing most of this season. He comes in for Trossard, who uh, I think would have had a better chance at the game. And as we saw as the game went on, Jesus wasn't match fit. He wasn't game ready. He was a little bit, a bit of a liability as usual. I'm a bit harsh on players like Zinchenko, Jesus, Ozil and all that lot, because when they're your highest earners, they should be your highest performers. And Jesus today was quite frankly shocking. I don't know what the, I'm going to have a look and see what the, uh, the who scored.com, what rating did they give Jesus? 6.9, a yellow card, a liability. He did, yeah. he did didn't have like a, couple of, a couple of big chances, didn't he? Um, the first one that he screwed wide. Um, the Don't second get one where too many chances yeah, like that in a exactly. game. The second one where he should have taken a shot earlier, but did one extra dribble. Um, I thought defensively he was good though. He really helped Kivio, who was really struggling the first part of the game. Um, that, I mean, he basically got his yellow card because of that, didn't he? Because he um, he um, he um, he kept fouling. Um, when he was coming back to cover for Kivio. So he did really, he helped Kivio out a lot. And Kivio owes him a drink probably tonight. Um, but I don't, I, the problem with Trossard is when he starts, doesn't really play that well That's from it. the start. Yeah, yep. he doesn't. And 
I mean, I watched him for Belgium the other night on the right hand side, and he was atrocious against Man. England. Yeah, well, so what you get for watching mm. England, terrible. Uh, we should say happy uh, David Rowcastle Day. I remember the day that I heard the news, going for a contraflow on the M11. And I, I remember that like it was last week. But what I was doing last week, I have absolutely no memory of at all. Uh, it was only, what's that, 20, uh, 34 years old. No, 33. Didn't even make it to 34. Um, much beloved by every Arsenal fan. There he is, looking at him, wonderful man holding the trophy. Um uh did you ever see him play i did but not not i mean very early memories i would say yeah <laughs> it's my, uh, my early football my earliest football memory is 1989 put it like that oh <laughs> that's well, the earliest game that i can remember off the top of my brain that's, that's i can't remember anything before that that's more than really. enough that's very yeah. good i was expecting you because you, you are quite quite the youngster I thought you were going to say I saw him playing for Hull or or uh, Chelsea, Chelsea or something like that. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I did. I mean, I wasn't like too. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't recall loads and loads of stuff. I can remember World Cup nineteen ninety quite well yeah. for some reason, but I can't remember mm -hmm. loads of. I just remember that Arsenal players never used to play for England for some reason, like him. Yeah, and they were like really good and winning the league and everything, but the players were never getting called up for England because it was dominated by other teams. So Rocky didn't really get that type of recognition at that level, did he? Because, yeah. Of, because, yeah. Quite a few. Was, yeah. Like John Lukic, um, Steve Bold, uh, Paul Davis, none of them mm -hmm. got the recognition. Even Ma Michael Thomas didn't get the recognition they deserved anyway. Um, yeah, everybody misses him. Absolute legend at the Arsenal um what else uh, well done to the ladies who won the league cup beating chelsea um and i hate the chelsea manager she's a knob i hate um matey boy's sister who, who's a violent thug who plays up front lauren james i mean he's a wonderful player and she's just an arsehole don't like her at all and i'm glad they lost and she got the, the, a booking early on and at the end of the game their manager um, our manager went to shake hands with her their manager and uh, emma hayes i think it is and she just brushed him off and pushed him away good That's all right. off you go to america love i can't believe she used to play for arsenal that was the surprise to me when i learned that who did emma hayes oh, and so did um J uh, James as well. I can't remember her first name. Lo is it Lauren James? Lauren James. Yeah. 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 She played yeah, yeah. as well. She started her career there. What's what's um what happened with this uh Frida collapsing? I didn't see. I just saw little bits of it. Of the what? The lady that collapsed. Arsenal lady that collapsed. I thought it was I'd, a head injury. I'd... I didn't really know what happened. No. Nope. All I know is uh, I saw a quick video on Twitter. I don't even know the score or anything about it. Um, uh, as... Yeah, she collapsed apparently on the oh. field and was well, taken to hospital. Yeah, Joshua so, put this in here. Yes, Joshua, best wishes to her. yeah, if you know anything about that, Joshua, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, oh, obviously, a happy chocolate day to everybody who celebrates chocolate day. It's one of the best days of the year for people who like chocolate. I like chocolate, and I've had no chocolate today. I had it yesterday because uh, Shane, Sean came down early. Right, let's get into some of the stuff of the, the game. We've done the lineup. Any surprises? I'm not happy about Jesus. I never am. Don't like him. He's very um, overrated by Arteta. But he was in a bit of a pickle. Uh, Martinelli hadn't been playing because he's been injured. Uh, like like uh, Femi was saying, Trossard isn't really a good player starting the game. And so he really was kind of out of, out of, out of choices. Uh, third minute, Jesus foul. Silver going a little bit mad. Jesus was straight in there, annoying people, wasn't it? And the sixth minute, Jesus with a great chance. Far post, soft touch after ch chesting it down very well and puts it slight, just wide of the post. For us to get a chance that early on in a game is rare, and he wasted it, didn't he? Yeah, screwed it wide, um, unfortunately. Um, uh, to be fair, when you look at the chance again, he, it, the only way he was going to score is if he put it on his right foot and bent it in a corner, and yeah. that wasn't really going to happen with the amount of Man City players in a box. So he, he did the right thing, but... It's just like always every single connection that Jesus seems to make in the box always seems to go wide. I really wonder why that is. All his shots seem to go wide for some reason. Because he's not a striker. 
is he? He's just someone who scored a lot of goals in a great team, like we found out with many, many players. As that young man who was on loan at West Ham found out, you can look great in a Man City side. You go to West Ham, you end up giving your West Ham fans the bird as you get back on the on the bus. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. He what was, a silly was, boy. He was better off sitting on the bench, wasn't he? It was. It just, and as we have found out with Zinchenko and Jesus, uh, sometimes... Uh, just because they won stuff at one club doesn't mean they're going to be great at your club. Oh, here we go. Josh has updated us. Uh, Frida collapsed on the field and the medics came to her immediately. Full oxygen, stretched off the field. She was conscious and alert and, uh, after that and stable. Very good. Bloody hell. Herbinio, someone I know from Twitter, saying hello on Twitter. According to our thing, family, there's 335 people watching on Twitter. There's not. There's, there's probably three. It, it massively over. It, it's like Donald Trump's taxes and is massively overrated. Bless him. Um, so, oh, some some notes in the chat. Uh, so did Cesc Fabregas, says uh, formerly Noza. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Noza, I have very little remember, memory of what I've just said, so I've no idea what that's in reference to. Lone Star says, thought Jesus worked his socks off today and protected the fullback to play a lot of players protected the fullbacks at times during the game today. Saka was immense tracking back. It was almost like when Saka met in his first season playing fullback. He was playing right back, covering, tackling, wiggling the ball in and out from people. Erdegaard was immense tracking back and our entire defence were absolutely fantastic. Um, Femi has disappeared. He's in hiding because the kids keep coming. Uh, he's, he had to barricade. Much like when you were six years old, he's got all the cushions off the sofa and he's barricaded himself into his uh, a man-made fort. So if he does disappear, that's why, because he's poking them with a broom handle to get them away from him so he can do this show. Get out, get out. No, I'm joking. <laughs> get them away. Um, right, let's move on a little bit. 15th minute, Ake with a header from the corner, one foot away from Raya, Hits it right at Raya. That was lucky. That um, uh, uh, There was a few times that happened during the game, but Raya had a great game, didn't he? Did he? He didn't let any goals <laughs> no, in. That's the number well, one criteria for the goalkeeper. Didn't let any goals was... in. Didn't give any penalties <laughs> away. For me, glorious. Oh, oh. <laughs> glorious. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, interesting performance from Raya. Um, yeah, that was he was good positioning, I guess, to to just be funny enough, isn't it funny that we played Man City twice this season? They've had two what now two shots on target, and they were both from yeah, they were both from Ake from a corner, I think. Both of them, that was it. They didn't have another shot on target in the whole game because Raya did have nothing to do. Harlan, oh, normally, when you do, uh, so. when you when you pump your players full of drugs, you do it over the space of four or five seasons. They pumped, they did all of the Harland drugs last season, back to back to back hat tricks, and now, eh, nothing. Yeah. And lots of numbers. Yeah, so, Go on. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 it was a good save, to be fair. Um, I don't know how he got a free header from like two yards out, though. That, that's yeah. a bit of a weird one. Um, but on Raya, I think you're. Saying he had, I'm not saying he had a bad performance, but his, his kicking was atrocious. End of the he, game, he give the ball away. That made me angry. He kept giving the ball uh, away. All game, all game. He kept kicking the ball right through the middle, kicking it out of play. Or my favourite one, he kept slipping over as he was kicking the ball. I was thinking, what is, what is going on? I think he changed his boots at half time because he didn't slip over in the second half. But he, he slipped over like three times in a row in the first half, kicking the ball away. But, I mean, his positioning is excellent as a keeper, though. He does really help out the defence the way that he, he, he plays. So, I mean, like you said, can't fault him. He got a clean sheet. He didn't, have a, didn't really have a shot to save. That, that was it. Game done. We've got a record. Nine people. This one's accurate. Nine people. 14 people watching on Facebook. Hello, everybody on Facebook. If you can give us a thumbs up or a smiley face or an angry face. We've got three of those things already. We have got uh, Nicancio. Is uh, Chor Chor is there. I'm obviously there and I did it. And who else is one? That's me. 
Uh, 14 people watching on Facebook. That's that's wonderful. Hello, everybody. 30 people watching on YouTube. You beautiful people are always there. And lots of numbers said I had really bad worries after Tommy Ashill came on in the second half. Doku had the better of him several times. I will come to that in my notes. Don't you worry. A question there from Habinio. I will save that for the end of the show. Um, Lone Star says, collectively, we were excellent. We were indeed and uh, where are we? Uh, Tom Andrew, exactly, Danny. I want clean sheets from the goalkeeper and defence. I don't think FM was saying he doesn't want clean sheets, but he just wants to I just, No, more. I just said his kicking was terrible. <laughs> good, good. 10 out of 10 from Tom. And lots of numbers. Reyes was good today. Raya, not Reyes. Um, but Saliba and Gabriel were immense. Let's have a little look at some of the little graphics that I've brought up. This one's really important, people. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my our, our ABW banner on this one. This is something I've made myself. This is all of our home people on the bus having a poo, walking in the door, filling the, the uh, washing machine. This is all of our Tetris fixtures since he's taken over, which is why you can see 1920 is grey for the home fixture because he wasn't manager. But you're looking at all, all of this, Femi. This, the, Man City, not only did you say they only had two shots on target, this is the first season where they haven't scored a goal against us. We got four points of us last season. They scored seven against us. Season before that, seven. Season before that, two. Season before that, three in the only one game that we played them. And you can see all of the games here uh, over the last few seasons. Red, the games that the teams on the left hand side are listed in order how we finished last season. So. That's the, the teams that should be better the next season. And look at all the reds from previous seasons and compared to what we've got this season. We've got two reds in the teams that finished. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the top eight teams, we've only got two reds. Newcastle cheated us and the Villa one, we were unlucky. We should have won that game. That is, that's a hell of an improvement, isn't it? Especially look at the middle. Newcastle, Liverpool, Brighton, and that lot. That's, that's losing games all the time. Mm. It's wonderful to see so much improvement in every aspect of the game, and it, it, it warms the cockles of my heart for me. Massive, massive. I really, really hope we can win this league because I'm telling you now, we deserve it. And the, the, the problem is, it's just the standard of this stupid league, isn't it? That the two games against Fulham are probably going to absolutely s screw us over, aren't they? Dropping four points against Fulham is is awesome. Four points? Yeah, we no five points, isn't it? Because we only got one point out of six. That's it's probably gonna, on yeah, it's probably gonna screw us over, to be honest. Um, but seriously, do you remember we used to go into games against all of these teams, especially the big two at the top, just yep. hoping, yeah, hoping we don't let in minimum three goals. That yeah, was Wenger's whole... record. It's Vegas yeah. record against always against the top three or four, so maybe the top six teams, season after season, complete failure regularly. More than failure. I mean, if we didn't let in four goals at Anfield, we had a good day. And then Emery came in and just continued the same trajectory. <laughs> to be honest with you, we you know we went to Anfield on the Emery first time. We we got smashed that five one. Um, so yeah, you, you look at the, the improvement. I mean, today is look at that. The, today is the first time Man City haven't scored a home goal in fifty-seven games. Oops. I counted it. I Two did and my, a half own little, years. my own little thing on that. It was uh, I counted league games only, which is more relevant. Go, the yeah. last time they didn't score in a home Premier League game was fifty games ago, and the thirtieth of October, twenty twenty-one. Palace beat them two 0 Unreal. Twenty twenty-one. I think, I think That's if you unbelievable. If you're going to do all games, that 57, I think it was Sporting Lisbon. I think they might have uh, lost or drawn at home to Sporting Lisbon. Um, but it's just every season, season, a rocky start like you were saying to the season, which is a shame, especially around Christmas when we started dropping points, West Ham, Fulham, um, Newcastle robbed us because otherwise we'd have been clear at the top. I think we've had another thumbs up on Facebook. Wycliffe, B-I-W-O-T-T, -T. be what? Thank you very much. Nice to see we've got four interactions on Facebook. Um, nice. Um, I, I like a graphic. Look at this heat map, people. For the people not watching, um, you look at Man City, touches 886. Most of theirs were in the, the third quarter of the pitch, which is red hot. 
and R1 439 Femi, our only red hot area was the defending, which is right from the, the edge <laughs> of the box all the way from the penalty area through to where Raya would have been standing. And then the, the their area was uh, freezing cold. You, if you, uh, you, you need to put your, your long johns on for that, but that is a very interesting heat map, isn't it? The amount of defending we were doing and the amount of no attacking we were doing. I'm quite shocked by that when I saw it. What? But it could have been the perfect game plan. Yes. Could have been if that last incident had gone up, if we had made the right decisions in that last bit of the game. Yeah. Could have gone our way. Could have done. Um, let's move on through the game. 30th minute. Um, oh, yeah. 27th minute. Saliba takes down De Bruyne. I've put nice. And straight away after, Kivia puts a block on Silva. Things are heating up. 30th minute. White on the edge of the, of the right of their box, drift past to Kai, who lays it off for Jesus, who has another go and gets nothing. Just shout over me, Femi, when you want to say something about any of this. 34th minute, Erdegaard chases another lost ball, which he did the entire game. Uh, back to Rice, to Jesus, who tries a mazy run along the edge of their box, but I think there was about nine Man City players that he was never going to get past those. Should have had a, should have had a first shot before yeah. they got in there. Should have had a shot first. At my last note in the first half, another good attack. Saka to Rice on the edge of the box to Kia. Uh, back to Rid. I don't know who Rid is. Um, R.I.D. Who could that have been? Rid, Mid, Fid. I've got no idea. Ah, back to Rice. <laughs> Rice, Rice would be what it is. Is a D next to a C? It's near a C. That I'll have that. Puts it through for Kai. Too many City players, and they couldn't do anything. What was your thoughts at half time, Femi? Did you think we could possibly go on and win this? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> like Longuna there. <laughs> do you know what? To be honest, I was just happy to come away at half time. Yeah, I, I kept counting. Asked me, okay, twenty minutes. We haven't let in a goal. Fantastic. Half yeah. time, and I saw a stat at half time saying, Oh, that's the first time since 2016 <laughs> that we haven't conceded the first half goal at City. And I'm like, 2016, that's almost 10 years ago. <laughs> that's so yeah. you take the little victory. So I thought, Okay, half time, little victory, reset, uh, and come back. Um, I didn't see much wrong after the first 15 minutes, I would say, where we let them dominate us too much. Yeah. Then we started playing a little bit more football, a couple of chances. We had more chances than them in the first half. We, I think we had four shots to their three. Um, so, yeah, we just have to take it, I guess. Oh, we've got five clean sheets in our last nine Premier League games. And in that run of nine Premier League games, we've conceded four goals. That is... That, with the form we are on at the moment, that is title winning form. Uh, our next game is Luton at home. They're a bit tricky, but we should beat them. Then Brighton or um, at their place, they're only ever good at home. Like we get every every single game from Josh, but Brighton are away. Each, I think he's just got that on cut and paste when everyone mentions Brighton losing, but Brighton are away. Then we've got Villa at home, Wolves away, Chelsea at home, and then Spurs away. So we've got Got some. There's, there's no games there that worry me. Uh, no, because uh, Villa, Villa away aren't really good. Brighton at home are okay, but just got more injuries. I just think every game is different. Every game is now just one game, one game, one game, one game. That's all you can do, off. isn't it? John Harding says, "Well done, Gunners. Proper warriors." Yeah. Good way to put it. Oh, that's maturity today, wasn't it? That's what I put it. We were not like. I remember when I used to watch Arsenal thinking it's like children playing against men, just doing stupid children stuff. Don't talk so, about Koscielny like that. He might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> and Mustafi. Wow. Mustafi, yeah. Ooh, that's giving people the, the, the jitters. All right, second half, 51st minute. Erdegaard sets up Saka down the right, rolls it across the front of goal, but Jesus couldn't quite get to it. We should have scores. Jesus has been so wasteful. Another chance for him. He was too... Busy tangling with the player to get in there, yeah. and then by the time he separated from the defender, he, he, it was too late. But that was a great chance, wasn't it? And that was Saka at about two minutes that he did something. Two minutes that's all he did for the whole game. There was about two minutes that he did a bit of he, he looked like Eddie and Ketia today closing down. He was just 
chasing lost causes, half-heartedly closing down, and there was a sprinting past them. His attacking was, I, I don't know what, what happened with Saka today, but got to watch that. If he's not fit, then, I mean, you can't play on Wednesday, really, can you, if he's not fit? But I think it, if you look... Go on. It just, didn't look, it just didn't look at it today at all. I think it was... Uh, he's had a long rest. I didn't play international football. Um, we all automatically assume they were just doing the Alex Ferguson thing. Of all of our players who are injured, they can't play. But you look at the amount of defensive work that Saka did today. He was immense. To come in, I mean, he was getting his foot. It was like a ballet dancer, winkling his foot in between everything. It was like, it was like uh, Carnu back in the day, where Carnu with his eight foot long legs would uh, wrap them around everything, get the ball and fish hook it out. He was doing that and loads of defending. And quite a few times he managed to get the ball off of people. Him and Rice were were wonderful. Got some more things in the chat here. Uh, Tom says, big Rob watching. Mm. Habinio says, I'm convinced that Saka was not fit. Also, Gabby Martitelli looked in pain at the end of the match. <sighs> he had a cut leg. He needs to get I over it. Just, I think we're managing a lot of our players. It's just, it's just they have to just fight through it to the end of the season. Gabriel, look, he was. If you looked underneath his sock, he was bandaged up to, to the to the maximum as well. You yeah. see pictures of Ben White in training with his knees all taped up. Saka looks like he can barely walk when he comes off the pitch nowadays. We're just we've played a lot of football in the last two seasons with some of those, especially the ones that we're talking about, Martinelli, Saka. Gabriel, White, they've played basically non-stop. They've hardly missed a game for like two, three years. So Yeah, and it starts to add up. Yeah, um, Just luckily we don't have a League Cup, which is finished, and, and an FA Cup run, but we do have the Champions FA League. Cup. See, Bayern lost again the other night. Wonderful. That's the title for Leverkusen. One, I'm a Dortmund fan, but I'm so happy that Sam Xhaka has gone there and is going to win the title. And Alonso has said he's staying on next season. So Bayern Munich and Liverpool can go and jump. They're not having him. Uh, 65th minute, Party and Tommy on for Kivio and Jorginho. Was that a good move? Because neither Party nor Tommy looked like they were ready to play football. It took them ages to warm up and get ready, especially Tommy. It did take them ages to warm up. It did. You're very right. Party, uh, it was a risky move. I said in my chat, I was said... Although I can see why you want to take Jorginho off, he's making a lot. Of, he was making a lot of fouls, but no one was running past him. Within the first five to seven minutes, Kevin De Bruyne just absolutely skins party on the halfway line, and yeah. I'm thinking, "Oh my god, why didn't he just foul him on the halfway line?" Yeah. <laughs> thinking, "Oh god, no!" But he settled down into things. He's passing. You can see. You can see his. Um, how can you put it? His his. Um, his passing through the lines is unbelievable, you know. Um, but you don't ever lose that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, as for Tommy Asu, he did get skinned a couple of times really badly, didn't he? Like really badly. Yeah, I mean, Doku is a great player, probably one of the buyers of the season. But uh, for Tommy to come on and, and uh, yeah, by the end of the game, Tommy had got the better of him in a couple of occasions when it really mattered. But early on, I thought that was two terrible substitutions. But uh, Kivior wasn't doing anything wrong. Uh, but he, like they said, he had played the full two hours of when Poland knocked uh, Wales out of the the, the, the the fire and stopped them getting there. And Jorginho, well, he played for Italy. Um, I noticed that he made, I don't know if he played both games. I know he started one of them. I didn't look at the other. You so maybe they're both they a little bit tired. America, didn't they, to play? I've got no they went idea. To Jer- they went yeah, they went to New Jersey. New Jersey. Did I hear that um, That Spain played and Raya played in goal for Spain and they lost? Yeah. At uh, West Ham? They lost one. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Wait. They played Colombia. Did they play Colombia? No, no, they played two home games. Oh, I'm sure he said they played at oh, West Ham. Someone lost to, someone lost to Colombia. Weird. Maybe it was Spain. But why would Spain mm. come to West Ham? I don't know. I've no idea. Um, and lots of numbers. Party is unbelievably slow. Couldn't keep up. But there was at one point in the second half, the player went round him and just ran off. And Party didn't even bother running after him. It was, it's like, yeah. That was Kevin De Bruyne. He's not exactly Mr. Speedy either, is he? No. I think it looked like he'd had uh, one too many Sunday roasts before the game started. <laughs> John Harding said, eight points off City and Liverpool. We should be seriously consider considering a league title. We are a good team. We are a very, very good team. Sure. 
should be considering the title, but it's really not in our hands at all, unfortunately. Mm, sadly. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it, with that, these two teams? Liverpool not playing well and still grinding out the results, which is the sign of a really good team. As long as as long as long Man City don't do four in a row, then I'll be able to live with it. Uh, Herbinio says Spain three, Brazil three. Oh, that's probably the game he played in, yeah. Uh, Josh says, Kivior couldn't find a pass, had to come out. No outlet down our left side. That's true. Uh, Kivior says, and uh, has improved leaps and bounds during the season, Se- the second half of the season. He can, he can perform at the required level. Tommy Ashu can't. Uh, that's a good point. But Tommy Ashu has uh, been out for ages. Um, yeah, he's been out for ages. And we're going to need all these guys that are on the bench. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, it's usually it's like nine games, but you need these guys. I, I like for for example Wednesday. There's no way Saka should be playing on Wednesday. Um, or they're just going to play him back into fitness. I, I don't know what the, the issue with Saka is, but um, we can't just play the same team every single. We basically got a game every three days, apart from one week where we got a game every what we got a five day break. But every, all the other games is every three days. We got a game. On the 3rd, a game on the 6th, a game on the 14th, 20th, 23rd, 28th, and the 4th. And then we get a week to the 11th, and then we get eight days to the last game of the season. So um, at least our last game's at home against Everton. We have won the league at home against Everton on the last day of the season before. I was there, my favourite season, my favourite game, my favourite goal all in that one game. Uh, they're just talking about... Um, uh, Tom says that... Um, uh, Raya played against Colombia, and says that was definitely that was Colombia. yeah. That definitely the Spain game. played Colombia and Brazil, and lots of numbers. Tommy Asho couldn't perform at the required level before his injury, in my honest opinion. Patrick Carlson is there from sunny Sweden. Right, sixty-seventh uh, minute, we had twenty-five percent possession in this this half. Um, but they're going when you're defending, you don't tend to get much. 71, Trossard on for Jesus. 74, Saka has been defend, doing lots of defending today, winkling the ball away in tight defensive positions. 75th, dodgy moment from their corner. A Kanji all over Raya, who falls, but Gabriel was pushed by one of their players, and then he fell into their defend, their player, and then they all fell over. That was a lucky stroke from us because I think if it wouldn't have been their player that had pushed Gabriel over, Gabriel might have been penalised for pushing the other player over as all three of them fell over like dominoes. There was quite a few nervy moments coming for the last 15, 20 minutes of the game, wasn't there? Yeah, it did, it did start to... <laughs> that was a long pause. <laughs> yeah. you, know what you know what it is? It's just when you get to that 15 minutes, you just start looking at the clock yeah. rather than the, the quality of your own performance. Yeah. Now it's just, okay, let's just not lose this. You know, there's been too many times in the past where we've gone chasing a game at the end and just ended up conceding. And all I, I, I don't even remember what happened in that last. I remember looking up at the clock when it was 81 minutes. Yeah. And then I was just like, oh my God, there's still about 15 minutes ago with added time. And then the next thing I look, it's injury time. Harlan's on the floor with his head in his hand for about two minutes. And the referee's blowing his whistle. Literally, I, I can't remember. Oh, no, we had that one chance, didn't we, I guess, that we'll come to. Yeah, that's coming up in a second. Uh, 80th minute, Erdegaard scythes down uh, Rodri and gets away with it. And I thought, that sums up our game. We did the dark arts on Man City. They didn't like it up and they couldn't play. The tables are turning and they're turning in our favour. And some of the stuff that Erdegaard was getting away with today... Man City, I can imagine on Man City fan TV, they are shouting and screaming that we didn't get Did anybody get any bookings at all for us? No. Jesus got one. Oh, no, Jesus. The ball away and Raya. Oh, got one for and Raya. Time wasting. Yeah. yeah that was I it. did. Not, oh, none for tackles, yeah. I did make a note of. Uh, oh, here we go. 66th minute. I'd missed this one. Jesus is so bloody stupid. The, the the ball has come gone out. A new ball has come in. He still goes over to the ball that had gone out. This, uh, he's picked it up and he's walking towards the, the the player with holding the ball. And then they go, well, we've already got the ball. And then so he, he gets the ball and throws it behind him slowly as it dribbles off the pitch. He gets a yellow card for it. Uh, there's time wasting and then there's time wasting by being stupid. And that was... The funniest completely... thing is, if he had... 
done that. He had already done the time wasting. All he needed to do at that point was just kick the ball off the pitch quickly. Yep. And he would, probably wouldn't have got a yellow card, funny enough. Uh, John Harding says, as fans, can we start to believe we can do it? One game at a time, as we found out this time last season. Don't, don't think more than one game at a time because uh, you just got upset yourself. Pete Coulson is there. Big Gabby Harland were having a bizarre animated row after the game uh, with Pep in between being ignored. You know, I've got some notes about that at the end of the game. Uh, there you go. This the moment we were talking about um, just now, Femi. 85th minute. We have a breakdown the left from Trossard. I think it was Martinelli was on the right hand side. No. Yeah. It yeah, was. Martinelli on the right. Um, keeping up with the running with them, but it, it all took too long, too much indecision. And by oh, the time, yeah. Go on, carry on. Talk us through it because I my notes oh, yeah. here are all over the shop. Party, so party's got the ball. Absolutely amazing line split pass to Erdegaard yeah. who times his pass brilliantly to Trossard Trossard all you have to do yeah. is put the ball in the middle Martinelli is fast enough yeah. like you said he's keeping up with him he, he was never going to score once he took that first touch the first touch should have been a pass to Trossard straight away not even a hesitation just straight away a pass to Trossard we did, I don't think we tested their goalkeeper enough today. He's their backup goalkeeper, was... Ortega. I think he's Argentinian. Still a, a decent goalkeeper. Uh, at one point in the beginning of the game, he had a bit of a knock and they said they're their substitute goalkeeper. I'm just going to go and check if it was. Um... Scott Carson. It's not for Scott Carson. Yeah, Scott Carson. That's what they said. It is, is it? Scott Carson. 38-year-old oh, Scott Carson. Couldn't catch a cold. So uh, that would have been hilarious because the first thing Arteta would have said is, shoot from anywhere he hasn't played a game since the 90s just start banging shots everywhere at him um so that was the chance of the game for us uh 91st minute doku has done tommy every single time 91 mm -hmm. harlan fell over yet again 93 tommy finally beats doku twice in the space of a couple of minutes um and that was really good and that was it uh the whistle blew the game was over I, as one Arsenal fan, are delighted with a nil-nil there. That some could say that doesn't show ambition to be happy with a nil-nil. But how many teams go to Man City and get a point? And when you add that to the fact that we beat them at home, we they didn't score a goal against us. Four points off them in a season. <clears throat> you can't argue with that, can you? No, they just showed the table for the top three facing each other. Arsenal yeah. have eight points. The other two have three points. I mean, you cannot argue with that. You go away like, in these big games, you go away, you win, you draw twice, you win your two home games, and then you try and take care of the rest of the league. And that's that's literally now, obviously, we are relying on other teams to stop Liverpool and City, let's let's be honest, especially yeah. Liverpool. Like I know a lot of people have this theory that oh Liverpool will fall off, Liverpool. To be honest, mate, they've only lost two games all season. Yeah. And one was to us where we actually battered them. The uh -huh. other one was that Tottenham game where it was just insane, wasn't it? Where they were down to nine men and Absolutely only lost in injury wrong. time. Yeah, they only uh -huh. lost in injury time. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're all relying on other teams now. So there's a few teams that we, we all got to play. Unfortunately, uh, they've got Sheffield United at home on Wednesday, which is a... Uh -huh. Disaster. <laughs> that, that, that'll help out their goal difference. Yeah, talk about well, yeah, the league that, that means Luton. We've we've got to take Luton very very seriously. I know people are going to be thinking, "Oh, rest this player, rest that player." No, 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 no. no, no. We've got to take it. We've still got to, because the goal difference. Look at it now. It's only six when you think about it. That's yep. a Sheffield United eight nine nil. They could beat them eight nine nil. Guarantee you that. Could do. At home, especially yep. at Anfield, they could beat them 8-9-0. And then that means we've got to do something against Luton. So it, it could still come down to goal difference, you know. And yeah, we just have... You know what's weird about the league table is Aston Villa being five points behind Man City. It, it, doesn't that just look really weird? I know they play the game more, but yeah. it's so weird, isn't it? Like it, it, it seems like the three have pulled away, but it's, it's not that far away. And they've only scored one goal less than Man City. Yeah, that, that, that's Ollie Watkins. But look, they've conceded forty-two goals. 
which is, I mean, Everton are in 16th and they've only conceded 41. They've conceded Forever. one more goal than Everton in 16th. I mean, that is, I mean, when you've got the world's greatest goalkeeper in Martinez, uh, but they've got Callum Chambers there and they don't let him play. They, Big mm. Bob doesn't even play for Palace. Like, Neither of our, big, two yeah. of our legendary centre-backs can't get a game for love nor money. Sad times. Holden's got an injury, though. He's got like a knee injury or something like that. So Who has? Holden, he's been out for ages with a knee injury. But I mean, he didn't really play before then anyway. Yeah. He had like one one sub appearance before then but then um yeah it's, it's just weird that you've got oh there you go play other game read read who's those your, stats out for the, the, people, at home? the game. So there are people at home william saliba was voted sky's man of the match um jules won seven i don't know how out of how many but he was ranked first in all of these he won eight possessions 25 successful passes two successful tackles and 48 touches was our first. <laughs> That's unusual, isn't it? We're usually up to the hundreds with some players, but 48 touches was our most touches today. That's That says a lot about our control of the game. Um, 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 for me personally, my man of the match was um, <laughs> Gabriel. I mean, you could either one of them, to be honest, for me. I thought Ben White was really good as well. It, just flawless. Uh, but... For me, Gabriel was just an absolute monster today. Absolute. But between the two of them, they've, they've given Haaland a massive headache this season. Probably the only team he has not had a shot against for the whole season. Whole man away. I'm not going to go for the, the easiest, obvious. Uh, give it to the defenders. That's their job. I'm going to give it to um, Erdegaard. Absolutely magnificent. He was, he was like playing the job of a... He's created a new role. The false nine DM because uh, he was absolutely everywhere. He probably did the most fouls during the game, did the most tackles during the game. Absolutely stunning. Actually, does it say tackles in this? Uh, does this thing? There we go. Tackles. Who had the most number of tackles for us? Yeah, Erdegaard with four, and Saka with four. I mean, the two people that I said were Saka was winkling balls away all game. Him and Erdegaard both had four um, tackles each, which is um, when we had 20, they only had 13. And their highest one was uh, G-V-A-R-D-O, Gavidol, Gavaridol. There you go. That's the word. <laughs> Where's he from? Spain? Croatia. Same thing. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm going to give it to Erdegaard, who was absolutely immense for me. Uh, proper captain's um, performance there. Took everything on himself. And like you were saying, all the details there about um, Saliba and all that stuff. It is strange. Normally, he gets 100 touches a game. But for him to uh, only have got 48, I was actually looking at the possession um, more. We had 888 touches. They had We had 404. We had half the number. Uh, Saliba, according to these, had 51. And the most anybody had, you won't be surprised, Rodri, 144. Yeah, that's that's, um, I'm not saying everything goes through Rodri, but everything does go through Rodri. I mean, Kovac, Kovac, Kovacic had 92, uh, Silva 88. But, yeah, just let them have the ball and uh, let them come at us. And, uh, to they... be fair, that little Oscar Bob guy caused us problems in the second half. Very decent Which player. What Swedish, he did, what? No, Norwegian. Yeah. Not Oscar Bob, it was Lewis. Sorry, Lewis. Oh, Rico oh, Lewis came on in the first, first half. half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He caused us problems because what he did was he did the Zinchen Zinchenko role. So he came in field. And what that meant was that um, De Bruyne could push right up, which meant that Declan Rice had to move back. So if you notice in the second half, Declan Rice was just less effective because... He basically had to mark the Bruyne nearer our goal rather than in the first half. He was basically, you know, closing down in their half. So, yeah, I mean, it's a tactical battle, isn't it? You can just all these little things that you have to get right. Two really good players. Rico Lewis, part of the England squad all the time now. Oscar Bob didn't play, but he he played for Norway mid midweek with Erdegaard and Haaland, and he scored a goal, I think. <clears throat> I think I remember reading that. Um, Pete says, Big Gabby and Haaland. Well, oh, we read that bit. Yeah, end of the game. Uh, Pep was having a go at Grealish. And then I don't know what he was saying to him, but it was giving him some. And then Gabriel was arguing with Haaland and Pep tried to break it up. I mean, when you've got two blokes at a 16 foot five, 
and and little bald uh, little bald Pep. Uh, not really going to stand much chance of breaking them up. Either. There's been quite a lot of afters for Man City with Pep having a go at his players. You'd think, why would you do that in public? Arteta wouldn't do that. He'd he'd, he'd wait till they're in the dressing room and then probably say something to them on their own. But Pep doesn't just go straight out there, grabs his players and starts shouting at them on the pitch. I think it's the second time this season he's done that with um, Grealish. So uh, Patrick says, the moment Saliba thanks Harland after the game, points to his head and laughs. Oh, good. By the sounds of it, he was saying, like, um, was it Big Bob holding to Diego Costa? Was it one of those jobs? Uh, I've been in your head for the entire game. Pete says, Luton is the ultimate trap game for us. Do not play party, please, Mikel. No. And um, Patrick says Luton's dot hit he sent off in went off injured yesterday. Huh. Who? Good. <laughs> I don't even know any of their players. No, nor do I. Uh, he, he could have said any name you want. Then I wouldn't. Uh, the only ones I know is the um, the ex Everton, Chelsea, and England midfielder who's having a time of his life. Plus our man who is there, who's one of their best players. Um, not oh, Tavares. They got, by the way, they got absolutely thumped by Tottenham yesterday. I don't know how they lost. They lost two one. Yeah, they got. It should have been like six one yesterday. Luckily, it wasn't. Right, we've only got one question from Herbinho. Uh, you can pick one Premier League or Champions League this season. Which are you going for? Um, Premier League. Yep. Fuck the Champions League. Not interested in it at all. They've shown it's not for the champions. It's for anybody. It's for bribery and corruption. Premier League, though, that's a sign. That's a statement that we're back in the big time and it's on like donkey kong femi uh 46 minutes no interruptions from the children my one won't interrupt me because she doesn't care about me anymore she's all grown up and uh, she bought me chocolate though i bought her a lint egg and she bought me a uh a bailey's chocolate egg mm, bailey's i don't even like alcohol uh it's been it's been a good game a, a decent result we're on course to uh possibly all we need is liverpool to slip up once because we're only a few points. Uh, we're only two points behind them in the league. Uh, but like you said, they've only lost two games. Games coming up next are... Um, where do you go? There we go. Next set of games. Uh, Spurs are at West Ham. Mm, we're at home to Luton. Liverpool at home to Sheffield United, like Femi said. Chelsea v Man United, probably the pick of the week. And Man City aren't playing. Why aren't they playing? They're playing Villa, aren't they? Oh, there you go. Aston Villa. Eight fifteen on Wednesday. Man City at home to Villa, and then the next set of fixtures: Man City away to Palace. Uh, Liverpool are away at Man United, who are rubbish, and I wouldn't put it past Man United to beat them, and that's our only hope. Uh, Spurs are home to Forest, and we are away at Brighton. Interesting times for me. Football is back. It's back on. Everything's looking good. Are you excited? Do you think we can do it? I'm excited. I don't know if we can do it. I don't know if we can do it. Do you know what it is? I'm so I'm so nervous that why is it that we've played this well? We have to win the league this season. We have played so well. Everything that all your eye test tells you we've been the best team in the league all season. Why are we second? I just hate it so much. And then it's the fact that we've got these two. Now it's out of our hands, literally, because we cannot, we're not playing these two anymore. Yep. So it's out of our hands. So we can do it, but it's, it's as long as it's not in our hands, it's a bit tricky to say, oh, yeah, we, we would do it. We'll do it. We can go and win all our nine games now and still not win the league. That's the problem that you've got right now. Well, as Bob the Builder says, can you do it? Yes, we can. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Femi, it's been wonderful to have you back on. It's been two weeks of no podcasts that were just all Arsenal, and I've missed it. Uh, will you be available I'm for a, put, a normal I'm midweek? Put a petition. What? Petition to ban international football. Yes, definitely. Only tournaments. Don't want anything other than tournaments. So you can have two friendlies before the tournament, and that's it. And all the shitty teams have to qualify for the tournaments. So, uh, yeah, so we just no more international because everybody hates it. Uh, Femi, will you be available for a midweek podcast sometime soon? Definitely. 
lovely jubbly thank you very much to everybody in the chat who's joined us according to twitter uh, according to Streamyard, there's two billion people watching us on twitter there's 35 watching us on youtube hello thank you for staying with us when no doubt there are better podcasts on oh so people have turned up rancid pumpkin of course we can do it it's liverpool's to lose but we can do it travisor is there undefeated in nine and those include Home to Liverpool, away to Man City. Let's be positive. We are positive. Pete Coulson says, thanks for the show, guys. Up the Gunners and lots of numbers. Thanks, guys. Great show. Come on, you Gunners. We will be back midweek. I think Mr. Josh is itching to get on and do a podcast. I'm not sure who else is going to be available or indeed what day we're doing it. Whether we save it for Thursday because we're playing on Wednesday um because that might be good to do it thursday and then um means we can talk about two games just trying to squeeze two normal podcasts out in a week is hard work john harding says come on you gunners plus rancid says thank you guys oh it's our very own ellis you beautiful bastard here he is if anyone's forgotten what ellis looks like there he is top right hand corner he's he's my after you femi he's my favorite at, at abw <laughs> Which is which is always. I mean, look at that. Look at Femi's pout. A la cheeky. <laughs> I never know. Ellis might even turn up for a game sooner or later. Um, and that's it. We will see you sometime midweek. And uh, keep the faith, people. It can still be done. We just have to hope that Man United beat Liverpool, and they have done it before. They can do it again because that's the kind of team Man United are their bottlers right here we go here's the outro and uh well done lads it's still on and have some steve and dave goodbye as soon as i scored that goal i was fucking livid get down dog splendid business he nearly caught the bloody thing what are you talking about <laughs> so i was just eating a full quiche well you don't often see him at him so when you see him in the supermarket they need to be swagged microwaved immediately and get the brown sauce on one bosh bob's your uncle never in doubt <laughs>